The first Sunday after Trinity, the Collect. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in thee, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without thee, grant us the help of thy grace, that in keeping thy commandments we may please thee, both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the first epistle of St. John, beginning with the seventh verse. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us because he hath given us of his Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the 16th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke beginning with the 19th verse. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died, and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, 
and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So, uh, this morning, I discovered that my printer was out of ink when it stopped printing on the second page of a four-page sermon, uh, which is decidedly the worst time to find out that your printer is out of ink. Uh, it's happened twice now. You'd think I would learn, but uh, unfortunately not. Hard-headed. Uh, so, bear with me. I'm going to try to read this off my tiny little phone here. Today's lessons speak to the most important commandment given to us by Christ. That is, it speaks to our obligation to love. In this instance, as is commonly the case throughout the New Testament, the scriptures enumerate the necessity for our loving both God and our fellow man. Indeed, when taken in its entirety, it instructs us to love God by loving our fellow human beings. The epistle reading provides us plain instruction, while the gospel reading describes the ramifications of our inaction. That is, the rupture that occurs between ourselves and God when we choose to live in a state devoid of compassion. The epistle reading is quite clear in its instruction. We are called to love God and to love one another. Stated plainly, we love God by loving one another. St. John says, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. We are called to love one another because God loved each of us individually. If then God loved each of us, it becomes quite apparent to even the most casual of Christians that it is sinful not to. To love your fellow man. St. John continues saying, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. St. John speaks with precision. Love is not an option. It is a commandment, and a commandment with the utmost importance. Today's gospel lesson comes from St. Luke. The story describes a rich man, a sick man, and the patriarch Abraham. The rich man, consumed with his quality of life and lacking compassion entirely for his fellow man, discovers that without love, 
he is without God. As St. John just exhorted, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. The certain rich man described in the story lived a comfortable life, devoid of compassion, and subsequently found himself devoid of God in the afterlife. The poor sick man who came to his gate begging for food lived a wretched, disease-ridden existence, but loved God through loving his fellow human beings. As a result of this love, he shared with both God and mankind. He found himself embraced in the bosom of Abraham in the afterlife. The rich man begs of the patriarch, saying, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. The roles are now reversed. Just as Lazarus begged at the gate for food, the rich man now finds himself begging for relief from Abraham as he is tormented in the fire. It is here that we are provided with a vivid description of the results of living a life devoid of compassion and love. Abraham says, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus' evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. The rich man lived a life devoid of love. He therefore lived a, an afterlife devoid of God. Here Abraham tells us that a life lived devoid of love and devoid of God results in an afterlife devoid of the same. Today's message is a very simple one. St. John tells us that God is love. To love your fellow human being is to love God. Failing to love your fellow man is failing to love God. A life devoid of love is a life lived devoid of God. To live a life devoid of love is to exist in an afterlife separated from God, an existence of misery and torment of your own making. The concept seems easy enough. Logically, I can understand it with ease. Unlike much of the theology we see and consider on a routine basis, this is quite easy to understand. Implementing it in our daily lives, however, is far more difficult. We do not stress this aspect of our faith enough. Most Christians are led to believe that a life of prayer, church attendance, catechesis, and Bible study is the fullness of the faith. And while they are crucial, very few consider their daily social interactions as another crucial aspect of that Christian life. <clears throat> we hear the words, we read the stories, and yet it continues to remain a foreign concept to many. Something that seems nice, but antiquated, and perhaps impossible in the modern world. Yet we are still commanded to do it. The commandment remains just as relevant to our modern selves as it was for the disciples of Christ's time. The world might change. Society evolves. But God remains the same, and so too do his demands. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in thee Mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without thee, grant us the help of thy grace, that in keeping thy commandments we may please thee, both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.